Hi, I'm Andrew, and so great to have you with us today. We want to encourage you to join us and invite others to our weekly online service Sundays at 10 a.m. as we encounter the presence of God in worship, teaching, and in prayer. Now, the Coldest Night of the Year fundraiser in support of Open Arms Mission has kicked off virtually with a variety of ways to participate throughout the month of February. Now, you find more information about how to get involved or join the Wellspring team or to donate through information and a link in our weekly e-bulletin or at cnoy.org or please feel free to contact the office via the info below. And February 13th at 7 p.m. we will be holding a virtual trivia night in support of Elisha House Pregnancy and Family Support Center. To join with your team this Family Day weekend and compete from home via Zoom, go to the Church Center app and register your team today. And February 21st at 6 p.m. we will be having a night of worship and prayer live from Wellspring Community Church. So to join us, sign up through the Church Center app to acquire a link to attend online via YouTube or Zoom. Now, if you need to connect with someone or you need prayer for anything, please feel free to reach out to us through any one of our social media platforms or at our website, wellspringchurch.ca, at the Contact and the Prayer tabs. And again, thank you for your continued generosity that makes all of this possible on a weekly basis. If you're watching today and somehow you'd like to partner with us, then we invite you to our website, wellspringchurch.ca, and find the Donate tab where you'll find links to give by e-transfer, credit card, visa debit, or even by mail. But if you're new with us, please don't feel any obligation to give. We're just so glad to have you with us. Well, thanks again for joining us. Hope to see you soon. And now, back to our announcement loop. What a great service we had last week as we had Mark Davey as our guest, and he preached such an encouraging word to us, a good faith-building message. I'm sure it was for me, and I hope that it was for you as well. It was also really encouraging to hear all that's going on with Global Harvest Ministries, the churches they're planting in the Philippines and in Pakistan, and the work they continue to do in Uganda. If you haven't taken the opportunity to give towards supporting them, I just want to encourage you to do that today if you can. We want to be able to pull that together and send it off to them and to just support and encourage and, and, uh, and stand with them as they continue to bring the message of Jesus to those various parts of the world. Thank you. And welcome to Wellspring Community Church. We're the Shreds, and we're so glad you can join us today. We pray that wherever you're joining us, that God would speak to each and every one of you today. We'd like to share a verse um, in hopes to kind of ready our hearts for our time in worship together. We're reading from Psalm 100 in the NIV, and it says, Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks and praise to his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues Lila. through all generations. God bless each of you as we worship together. Lila. Sit. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your life. And there is no rival that could ever stand against your might. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won. You've already won. And there is no weapon that has ever left you mark on you and there is no army with the power to conquer true you've always been with us every battle you've already won you 
Disappointment and break every chain. Oh, all of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. Oh, all of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name.
search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for made it when it's all about you it's all about you In the spirit through submission and surrender and and we have to be willing at different points in our life in our relationship with God be willing to allow him to inspect our hearts and inspect our lives and and allow him to continue to refine us to make us the vessels that he desires to live in and to live through and uh, this is such a powerful and poignant song when we we, we want to make sure that our hearts are pure before the Lord and, and that our worship is pure. And it's a good thing for us to do this and to come to this place and, and just to make sure that our hearts align with, with what is true and what is right and what is lovely. And so, I don't, you know, if you've journeyed through this song here this morning, we're also going to take the next step, though, as we've come to this place of repentance and, and just openness before the Lord. We also want to make sure that we make it all about Him and not about us. And that we turn our eyes and fix our attention on Him and who He really is. So we're going to go into this next little chorus and just...
remind ourselves what this is all about. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Let's sing it again. You are worthy of it all. Yes, you are. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. It's our heart, it's our prayer that our worship would be pure before you, that we wouldn't make it about anything else but you. Lord, we pray that as we, just as even as we continue in our time of worship, that you would just continue to refine us, to keep our eyes fixed on you, and that our songs, that our thoughts, that our hearts, that our lives would be pure worship to you.
can hardly think as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still as you call me revelation, no matter how good our earthly father is, or no matter how difficult or painful our relationship is with our earthly father, when we understand the love of our heavenly father, there is nothing like that, because we recognize our worth, we recognize our position, how, how we can be secure, and that he will never fail us. And that's such a powerful, powerful thing. Just pray, Lord, that you would just speak into people's hearts here today about how great and how powerful your love is for each of them. How you desire to reveal yourself in such a great way that they can know that they are safe and secure, that they can know that they can rest in your love, that they know that they can trust you that you are not gonna harm them, you are not going to do anything that would bring harm to their life, but you are continually working in and on their behalf to bring about your good in their lives as they keep their eyes fixed, secure on you. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for showing us, showing us what the Father is really like when you came and demonstrated the character of the Father here on earth. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm, I'm just gonna do something I just feel right in this moment to do, and this is certainly a, a step of faith uh, in the context of how we continue to learn how to do church. But I really feel like I need to ask Aaron just to pray and um, and just to pray about uh, just about the love of the Father of, of, of our Father God 
just this is such a, a important song for Aaron. Uh, he sings it from a place that many of us don't necessarily sing it from. And I just feel like there's a, a prayer that he, he would have in his heart in this moment to pray. And I'm just gonna, we're just gonna wait and just take this time and let God speak to us through this prayer. for anybody that hasn't experienced your love in a real way, in a tangible way, Lord God. I pray that you would reveal yourself to them. And that you would let them know that you're the only love that they need. <laughs> Lord God, there's, there's no greater love. There's no greater Father. <laughs> and I thank you that you chose me. Thank you that you choose us. pray that you would you would just reveal yourself in incredible ways to everybody watching lord everybody taking part in this and lord god you would just call your children back home lord you don't want a single one of us to go astray i thank you for the love that you've shown me i thank you for the love that i feel and lord god i just pray that you would continue to multiply multiply that love in my life in our lives as we draw closer to you, Lord, as we seek your face, and as we long for that intimate relationship with you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for this in Jesus' name. some ways you don't want to move on from a moment like this and the, the beauty of this is if you want you can go back and watch it again and replay this and just sit in this moment but we want to continue in what the Lord would lead us to do in the rest of our time together here today and I just pray that as you continue to watch that you would just allow not just the words of the words that are shared that are coming from a person speak to you, but that you would hear the heart of God in everything that's spoken. That you'd open up your spirit to what the Holy Spirit would want to speak beyond maybe even the thoughts and the preconceived ideas that you have, but that you allow God to work deeply in you. So I just encourage you to lean in to what God wants to speak today and in this moment, and as you continue to press into your relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you soon. Well, good morning, and I hope that you've already had a great time connecting with God in worship and that you are just really engaging your heart this morning or whatever time you end up watching this at. Um, I'm going to pray. We're going to dig right in and continue on our series about people of the Spirit. So let's pray together. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to worship you, to connect with you, and to connect with each other. I pray, Lord, that during this time, your Holy Spirit be, would be working in our lives in such a way that brings your truth to bear in our lives to help us grow and move forward and progress in the work that you want to do in our lives. I pray that you would enable me to communicate clearly and accurately both your truth and your heart so that we can all benefit from it in Jesus' name. 
Amen. So we've been talking this year about being a people of the Spirit and, and what that entails and what that means. And really, we haven't even gotten into some of the basic foundational stuff. What we've really worked at is posturing our hearts, making room for him, putting, putting him first, making room for the Holy Spirit to work in our lives and inviting his work in our lives. So a couple weeks ago, we talked about fire. We talked about the fire that comes from the Holy Spirit that brings his presence, that deals with sin in our lives, that purifies us and that brings God's approval in our lives. And uh, we're going to continue, of course, talking about the Holy Spirit today, but we are going to move into one of the foundational basics uh, of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so I want to start by reading a couple of passages from the Old Testament, because the prophets of the Old Testament spoke about what the Holy Spirit would do in the New Testament after the coming of Jesus. So in Jeremiah 31, starting at verse 31, going to 34, it says this. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Let me read one more passage from Ezekiel 36, verses 26 and 27. It says this, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh, meaning soft and tender. I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. So both of these passages, we're speaking about this new covenant. We're speaking and looking ahead to what Jesus was going to accomplish for us. And in that process, he talks about doing something in our hearts. You know, writing his laws on our heart and, and giving us a new heart and a new spirit and putting his spirit in us and forgiving our sins, all these different things. And this new covenant in Jesus, is this promise is that God would bring specific results in our lives, that he would put his spirit in us. He says, I will put my spirit in you. And, the, and, and here are three results of that. Number one, it says that we would be forgiven. He says, I will forgive their sins and, and, and their wickedness and remember their sins no more. In Ezekiel, the verse preceding the passage we read, he talked about, I will wash you and I will make you clean. <coughs> And so the, one of the things that the Holy Spirit does is that when we surrender our lives to Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes and he brings forgiveness to us. He removes and wipes away all of our mess, all of our mistakes, all of our stupid decisions, all of those things that, that, that are broken in our lives and he forgives all of it. Not some of it, he forgives all of it. It's amazing. The next thing that happens is that we would know him. In the Jeremiah passage, he says, no longer will somebody come to you and say, know the Lord. He says, for they all will know me from the least to the greatest. When the Holy Spirit comes and indwells us, it gives us the capacity to know God, to, to, to actually personally know him, to know him up close not just know about God, but know God. I can know about an author, but knowing an author is a different story. I can know about a famous person, but knowing that person is different because knowing the person speaks of relationship and connection. And he said, by putting a spirit in us, we would know God. We wouldn't just know about him. We wouldn't have to have other people say, here's what I need to tell you to know God. It's we would know him. The third thing that would happen is that we would be transformed. We would become 
more like him. Okay, he says that I will move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. In other words, he would move our lives to begin to behave in a way that reflects God's truth, God's values, God's ways. We would become more like him. There's a verse in 2 Corinthians 13 that talks about that when we behold him, when we when we come and look at him, when we pursue him, that we are transformed into the likeness of Jesus from one measure of glory to another. And that that is a work that the Holy Spirit does in our lives. It's a really great verse. And I would encourage you to look it up for yourself. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. So when we bring all of that concept into the New Testament, the New Testament talks to us and, and speaks of this new life. And we could read a whole lot of scriptures, but we're not going to do that. But I want to center up on one particular one, and we're going to do some, some geeky Greek a little bit today, but we'll have fun with it because I've got some illustrations to kind of help you with it. 2 Corinthians 5.17. This is a verse that is worth memorizing. I learned this verse when I was probably six or seven years old, I memorized it in Sunday school. This is a wor uh, verse worth memorizing. And it says this, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, that, that, that word that means stop and pay attention. Behold, the new has come. The word new is used twice there. He is a new creation, and then it ends the verse with the new has come. So I want to talk about this word new. This is where we'll have a little bit of fun with this. Because uh, that particular word new is the Greek word kainos. Uh, in using our lettering, it, it would be K-I-N-O-S, kainos, actually kainos. And, but in Greek, there are two different Greek words that are translated new in the English language. One word is neos, okay? And neos is a, is a Greek word that means something that is chronologically new, okay? In other words, it didn't exist and now it does. When you have a baby, it is a neos born baby. It, it, it wasn't and now it was, okay? It's not, a, it, it's, it, it's not like the baby's been around forever and then suddenly comes like it's a new baby. It's, it, it wasn't and now it is, okay? And so this word neos is a chronological thing, something that didn't exist and now it does, okay? The, the antonym or the opposite of it is, is, the, is the Greek word arche, which, which, means, which means ancient or non-existent, okay? It's, it's a first thing. Don't have time for the details on it. The second Greek word is the one that's used in this verse, the word kainos, and, and the word kainos uh, it, at that time, because these words got a little bit, mis, you know, changed up a little bit later on in the development of the language. But at that time, that word kainos meant qualitatively new. In other words, superior to the old. And the, the antonym or the, op, the, the opposite word would be a word that meant obsolete. Okay, obsolete. In other words, something that is, is, is lesser is of no use, um, you know, d different things like that. It, 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 so this kainos means that not only is it new from a sense of being novel, of being something that's fresh, but it means something that is superior, that it is better than the old. So when the Bible talks about us being a new creation, it talks about something that's better than the old. So I'll give you an example of neos and kainos just in, in, in historical everyday life. Well, everyday life, but historically. The idea of recording sound was neos, okay? All through history, sound could not be recorded until Thomas Edison invented the phonograph in 1877. You'll see a picture of Thomas Edison with his phonograph. And in 1877, he developed this thing which, which had a wax cylinder that allowed it to actually record sound waves and then be able to play them back. Now that was, 
That was NEOS technology. That was a NEOS invention. In other words, recording sound never existed before, and now recording sound existed. But since then, there have been all kinds of improvements or kinos inventions, new ways of recording sound that were superior in some way or another. So we're not going to go through all of them. We don't have time for that. But what you end up with, I'm just going to set this here. Uh, what, what you end up with is, for example, uh, in 1963, in September of 1963, Philips Company introduced the cassette. All right, so the cassette, you'll see a picture of a cassette. Some of you might actually not know what that thing is, but my generation, we grew up with these, okay? So the cassette was in a lot of ways superior. It still recorded sound, recorded music, and sometimes actually the audio quality was worse than like a vinyl record. However, it was superior in some ways because it was more robust, it was smaller in size, you had portability. Um, when it came to vinyl, you could only buy something that was recorded. You couldn't record your own vinyl, but with cassette, you could record yourself. You could get a microphone and a cassette recorder. There, it was a kinos, it was an improved new Okay, and so, but cassette had its own problems and, you know, looking at the next picture, um, anybody who's had your cassette player eat the tape, okay, well, that's what we called it, uh, you know, it's like, oh, the machine ate my tape and the cassette would jam and it would pull all the, pull all of the, the, the tape out of it and then you'd have to unravel it and sometimes it was unfixable and you'd have to splice and you'd lose half your song. Oh, the joys and, and memories. Now, after the cassette came the CD. You're familiar with the CD. Probably more of you are familiar with the CD. And the CD, again, was Kinos, it, the idea of recording is still the same, but it had superior audio quality. Um, it, you know, it, it had the convenience, other conveniences. They came out with CD changers where you could put multiple CDs in a machine and switch them up. And, you know, just it was an improvement. It was digitally recorded. And so you had, there were other improvements. I don't want to get too technical on it. Um, nowadays, we've reached the point in our lives where we have streaming. And streaming will bring up the thing, for example, that's a, that's a screenshot of my phone uh, streaming the Vineyard An Anaheim where the song that we've been singing this last month called Holy Spirit Come comes from that album and that's kind of the reason I took that screenshot. Um, I did a little bit of quick math because uh, I wondered how many songs are on Apple Music. And so I did a little bit of quick math, and this, this is the kinos, the new improved with online streaming, gives you access to so much music anywhere you have an internet connection. Now you have a level of portability where you're not bringing stacks of CDs or a box, a, a case of cassettes, or a stack of albums, you have instant access. If you were to play every song on Apple Music and listen to each song only one time, if you listen to those songs 24 hours a day and played each song, it would take you 534 years to listen to every song that's on Apple Music right now. That's how much music we have access to over 70 million songs we have access to. Try to fit that on a cassette. So anyway, uh, so that gives you an idea of the difference between Neos, a new invention that never existed, and Kinos, new which is improved. And I think I got through that illustration in record time. Anyway, little groan for you there today. So what happens is when we give our life to Jesus, when we surrender our lives to Christ, there is a fundamental change to our being that takes place. Because the Bible says we, we, we receive a new spirit, a new heart. It says that God puts his spirit in us and that now we can know him and we are connected to him. And, and listen, Becoming a believer, becoming a follower of Jesus, becoming a child of God, whatever term you want to use, this is intended 
to change our lives. This is intended not just to be something that we kind of add on to our lives. This is not intended to be something that just kind of is an improvement scheme for our lives. This, God has designed this to, to completely transform and change our lives. And I just want to say right now, you know, whatever, wherever you're at, if, if you have, have had no faith in God or if you have a nominal kind of basic faith in God or you be, kind of believe in Jesus but, but you don't really have that, that life-transforming, new heart, new spirit, knowing God kind of life, I just want to encourage you. It, it's not rocket science. It's a choice. It's a choice that you make to, in, to, to, to really surrender your life to Jesus and say, Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. Make me new. Remove my sin. Put your spirit in me. Give me a new heart and give me a new spirit. And, and, and make that way that I can know you. God wants to transform our lives. He wants to transform your life. And if you've never done that before, then just do that. And, and you know, the sincerity of your heart is what God sees. The, the honesty and the sincerity and the faith of your heart is what God actually sees. And here's the thing, is that the changed life that we experience is the evidence it's the evidence of, a, of that genuine faith, of that sincere heart. And so now you say, okay, great. I'm, I'm a child of God. I'm a believer. I've given my heart to Jesus. He's given me a new heart and a new spirit. His spirit lives in me. I can know God. I'm forgiven. Where does my journey go from there? And this is the thing that's so wonderful, is that the work of the Holy Spirit is not a one-shot it's not like you give your life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes, he gives you new spirit, new heart, and then it's like, this is the new you, and now, now everything just continues as it is. There is an ongoing work that the Spirit of God does in our lives and in our hearts. And I'm really, really thankful for that because I would just want to give up if this is all there was. And I want to read this verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. And it says this, so we do not lose heart. I'll give you context a minute on that. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. That word renewed is one of the verb forms of kainos. It's ana, anakainao, and it means to make new. But not just to make new as in didn't exist exists, but to make new as in improved. In other words, every day we can experience a making new, a renewal, a making better, an improvement, a growth, a forward process. The context of this passage if you were to read it, if you were to read, you know, just go start right at 2 Corinthians 4 and right, read right through that one chapter to just give you some context. He talks about hardships. He talks about being hard pressed. He talks about being perplexed. He talks about being persecuted. He talks about being knocked down. He talks about, you know, just, just difficulties, confusing, difficult times, times where things happening around him and things happening to him are out of his control and they seem harmful to him, detrimental, hurtful. And in all of that, this, this where he goes to this, this thing where he says our outer self is wasting away, basically saying he says things that are going on outside of me are, are hurtful to me. They're, they're, they're waste, they, 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 they erode the you know, life. They're, they're meant to pull you down. They're meant to drag you down. They're meant to hurt you. But it's interesting because he starts this verse by saying this, we don't lose heart. He says, we're perplexed, we're not down, we're persecuted, we're, 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 you know, we go through all of these things, but we don't lose heart. 
We don't lose heart. Why? Because even though everything outside seems to be wrong, everything outside seems to be rough, everything outside seems to be difficult, there's something going on inside of me. I don't lose heart because even though all this is happening, every day I'm experiencing some kind of renewal. Every day the Holy Spirit's power and presence is fresh. Every day, he's making me newer. He's making me newer improve. He's making me better. He's moving me forward. Like I'd mentioned 2 Corinthians 3.18, where it says that when we behold him, we're being transformed from glory to glory into the likeness of Jesus. He's saying, listen, every day we can do this. You see, what is it, (coughs) excuse me, what is it to be a people of the Spirit. It is living a life tapped in to the eternal source of life. It's living life not out of a previous encounter, but it's living life in an ongoing encounter with the eternal living God. It's not just knowing about him, it's knowing him. It's not just being forgiven, it's growing in righteousness and holiness. It's not just life going the way we wanted to, but it's knowing that, I love this verse in 1 John, knowing that the one who is in us is greater than the one who is in the world. It's knowing that the inner life and inner strength that comes from the Spirit, that we can live our life out of that rather than out of all of our circumstances. This is what it is to be a people of the Spirit. And you know, the the news gets actually better because there's, there's a final new that the Bible promises. And in Revelation chapter 21, verse 5, It says this, speaking of Jesus on the throne, it says, and he who was seated on the throne said, behold, I am making all things, everything new. And it's that kainos word again. I'm making everything new, better new. Making the old things obsolete. It says, he also said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. These words are trustworthy and true. And so we don't lose heart because not only do we have that initial work of the Spirit gives us a new heart, God gives us a new spirit, he puts his spirit in us, we know him, we're forgiven, he he begins to transform us and moves us to begin to behave and 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 uh, and and act like more like him in his values, in his character, in his love, in his power. There's not only that initial thing, there's not only this ongoing process, this ongoing process of Every day, this opportunity to be renewed, to be made fresh by the Spirit, even though things are wasting away outside. But there's also this hope and this promise that there's coming a day where Jesus will make everything new, where it won't be just internally new, but our bodies, we're going to have new bodies that are incorruptible, that don't get sick, they don't get tired, they don't get weary. He's going to change the order. He's going to change the order of creation. I think he's going to change the laws of physics. He got to write them the first time. He gets to rewrite them the second time. He's going to change the way reality works and he's going to make everything new better. And that's what we're going to live in. That's the hope that we have. That's the reason we don't give up because we don't just have a hope for now, but we have a hope for eternity. We don't just have a hope for the moment, but we have a hope for the future. And so I want to encourage you in this. It's, it's even as I was preparing this message, I was asking myself, you know, Lord, how do we live this? How, how do we live this renewed day by day thing? All right. And Some of you are more creatures of, well, we're all creatures of habit. Some of you are better at disciplines than others are. 
okay? So some of you may be very structured and every day I get up in the morning and I read this and I pray and I do this, this, this. And some of you are like, every day I get up and my, it's haywire and when I get a chance, I try to spend some time with God or whatever. I'm not gonna tell you how you need to do things. But I will say this, there really is merit and there really is value in making a choice every day to somehow singularly engage with God and invite him to work in your life, whether that's in your Bible reading or in your prayer time or in a quiet time or even if you're going for a walk. Don't just get exercise physically, but maybe it's an opportunity to get some spiritual exercise and take that time to just pray and reflect and give thanks to God and open up your heart to him. And that daily renewal is not necessarily a daily emotional experience, but like we talked about before, it's like eating food. It's just, it's not always steak. It's sometimes it's broccoli. Like it's just, it's not always exciting, but it's always nourishing. And what I've discovered is this all throughout life, but it just even, you know, even in this past week, by just exercising this habit of engaging God every day and saying, Lord, I ask for your renewing strength in me. I ask for your Holy Spirit to make new. I've discovered that it prepares me for something I might have no idea of. I might end up in a conversation that I didn't anticipate at all. And that happened one time this week. I wasn't anticipating a conversation and I ended up in this conversation and, and, and it, was, it was a divine appointment. It was a God moment. And at the end of it, I was saying, Lord, I thank you that I spent time this morning in devotion, even though it, it didn't, I didn't feel your presence, it didn't feel like an ooh experience with God. But yet when the moment came where I needed that spiritual strength, it was there because I chose to be renewed that day. And so choose to be renewed day by day. And even though everything around you might be wasting away, you may be perplexed, you may be knocked down sometimes, but the life in you that Jesus has put in you is powerful and you could live in that kind of renewal. So I want to encourage you in that today and I want to pray for you that God will help you and strengthen you. So Father, I just pray right now for each person that is watching. And Lord, if they don't know you, if they've never had this experience of a new spirit and a new heart and your spirit in them, Lord, may this be a day that they say, Jesus, come and make me new. Forgive me and make me a brand new person. I wanna know God. Lord, that all of us have experienced the hardships of life at various times and in various ways. But Lord, I pray that today would be a day where you open up our eyes and enable us to see that there is this renewing power of the Spirit available to us every day. That even though we waste outwardly, maybe, you know, maybe even physically we're worn down or we might be tired or we might be wrestling with some things physically or whether it's circumstances or pressures or confusion or finances, that Lord, the, the outside waste doesn't have to determine who we are because we have an inner wellspring of life that we can tap into and be renewed by. Lord, I pray that we would learn to tap into that spring and that we would be people who, that even if we outwardly waste away, that inwardly we are renewed day by day as we look forward to the day when you make everything new. And we can really celebrate that too. In Jesus' name, amen. Be encouraged, be strengthened, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Praise God. We're gonna go back into our announcement loop and we have some information to share with you there. So stay tuned for that. Have yourselves a really great day. God bless you. Hi, I'm Andrew, and thanks for joining us here today for our weekly service. What a great reminder that the Lord is working to make us new. We pray that you are encouraged to keep moving forward, seeking the Lord with all of your heart. And we encourage you to join us and invite others to our weekly online service Sundays at 10 a.m. as we encounter the presence of God in worship, teaching, and in prayer. 
Now, the coldest night of the year fundraiser in support of Open Arms Mission has kicked off virtually with a variety of ways to participate throughout the month of February. Now, you'll find more information about how to get involved or join the Wellspring team or donate through information and a link in our weekly e-bulletin. Or you can reach out through cnoy.org or please feel free to contact the office via the info below. Now, February 13th at 7 p.m., we'll be holding a virtual trivia night in support of Elisha House Pregnancy and Family Support Center. To join with your team on this Family Day weekend and compete from home via Zoom, go to the Church Center app and register your team today. And February 21st at 6 p.m., we will be having a night of worship and prayer live from Wellspring Community Church. To join us, uh, go to the Church Center app to acquire a link to attend online via YouTube or Zoom. Now, if you need to connect with someone or if you need prayer for anything, please reach out to us through any one of our social media platforms or through our website, wellspringchurch.ca, at the contact and the prayer tabs. And thank you again for your continued generosity that makes all of this possible on a weekly basis. If you're watching today and somehow you'd like to partner with us, uh, we invite you to our website, wellspringchurch.ca, and find the Donate tab where you'll find links to give by e-transfer, credit card, visa debit, or even by mail. But if you're new with us, please don't feel any obligation to give. We're just so glad to have you with us. Well, thanks again for joining us. Hope to see you soon. And now back to our announcement loop. What a great service we had last week as we had Mark Davey as our guest and he preached such an encouraging word to us, a good faith building message. I'm sure it was for me and I hope that it was for you as well. It was also really encouraging to hear all that's going on with Global Harvest Ministries, the churches they're planting in the Philippines and in Pakistan and the work they continue to do in Uganda. If you haven't taken the opportunity to give towards supporting them, I just want to encourage you to do that today if you can. We want to be able to pull that together and send it off to them and to just support and encourage and, and, uh, and stand with them as they continue to bring the message of Jesus to those various parts of the world. Thank you.